You're tuned in to Nerd Overload, your weekly show for video games, movies, TV shows, comics, tech news, and more. Now your hosts, Cody Pinnock, Samantha Cross, Sam Dunham, and Josh Harrison. Hey everyone, welcome to Nerd Overload, the pop and geek culture show that, much like the Ghostbuster Afterlife trailer, is a bunch of 30-somethings explaining to young people why Ghostbusters is cool. <laughs> I'm Sam. I'm Samantha. And I'm Slimer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, we have a great show for you this week. Thank you all for tuning in. We have a bunch of news to go over, but first, let's talk about some things we have been checking out. And it has just dawned on me, I have not checked out much this week. Oh, no. <laughs> I've not either. Nope. I've, I've played the new Shovel Knight, not the fighting game part, but the King of Cards part. Yes. Okay, tell me all about it, because probably once we get done recording, I will go and do that thing. <laughs> It's very good. King Knight has a very interesting control scheme. Okay. He dashes forward kind of like Wario Land style shoulder charge. I was just going to say he looks in the trailers. He looked a little bit like Wario. Yeah. But after he hits something, he bounces off into a pirouette into the air that you can use then from there to bounce off of bad guys as an attack. Oh, interesting. So it's really unique. And all the levels are like expertly built around that like you would expect yacht club to do oh sure yeah the card game is it's pretty fun okay i don't know i mean i'm not a big card game guy mm-hmm. and i definitely don't go to shovel knight to play a card game okay how integral <laughs> to the game is the card game aspect is it like pretty mm. important or is it, are they like just side quest kind of situations it's, i mean it seems kind of important to the story but it also seems like you could probably skip them if you really wanted to gotcha okay uh, but it's it's a neat game the card game mm-hmm. but yeah I, it doesn't seem necessary i would rather have just had more platforming stuff sure because that's what they do so good right but you know i, I can't fault uh yacht club for trying something a little bit different yeah. Between this and the uh, Shovel Knight Showdown, which is what I'm really itching to, to try out, their, the, uh, their fighting game. The Shovel Knight Smash Brothers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, because I, I guess every character has its own unique story mode, like with a story and like everything. Like That's they went cool. through and including the Baz. <laughs> the Baz is a playable character. The King Knight stuff is actually, it's a prequel. It takes place before... Uh, Shovel Knight does. Oh, it does? Okay, does it take place... Well, um, uh, Spectre Knight was a prequel as well. Oh, I I never played the Spectre Knight one, so... Okay, Spectre Knight takes place like immediately before Shovel Knight, where Spectre Knight's whole thing is he's going through and uh, recruiting all of the Order of No Quarter. So, does it take place before then? I guess it would have to, because King Knight is in the castle when Spectre Knight gets there yeah and there, there's parts you you take over the castle you take over pride more castle. oh interesting okay yeah. cool very cool so yeah it, it's definitely fun i it's worth checking out yeah definitely okay oh right on right on well uh i've continued to plug away at uh pokemon i'm still trying to get uh get that pokedex or whatever it's kind of slowing down a little bit on it i'm finding that I, i'm hopping in for like a couple of the max raids and then I'm catching a couple things and then I'll go, I think I'm done for a while. <laughs> like, yeah. And, uh, I've, I've tried the battle tower and they, it almost forces you to like have level 100 dudes that right. are like, you know, maxed out to like their specific thing, like min maxing and like all of that max IVs or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Gross. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not really feeling that too much. But, uh, but no, it's interesting. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I'm still enjoying it. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be sticking with it at quite as long. Like, like we said last week, I don't know if I'm going to be sticking with it quite as long as I have with prior Pokemon games. It kind of depends on what kind of events and like things that they release yeah, after. It seems like one they could continuously add, keep adding to hopefully. Yeah. yeah. I hope so. I hope so. I don't know. I after I got thoroughly trounced by uh, Leon, I have not gone back to try again. <laughs> yeah. Um. I mean, once once you get, you can kind of brute force Leon once you get the levels up high enough. But in the um, battle tower, that's actually who I'm stuck on. Is he is over there as well, and he just keeps because it it uh, 
drops everyone down to level 50 and you have to go straight off skill instead of like oh. you can't you can't just be like 10 levels higher yeah and yeah and like all this uh buddies like no weird moves that you're not wouldn't expect so huh. you so it's hard to kind of like counter them so it's kind of weird but i don't know still enjoying it but uh you know perhaps not quite not quite where where it was before <laughs> but it's not franchise ruining no, it's not franchise ruining. I wouldn't say that. No, but all your not. favorite Pokemon are gone. They took them all out. Uh, did they? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Farfetch'd is there. Yeah. <laughs> He's right in there. I've noticed the whining about it about the game has definitely died down now that yeah. it's come out, and it's not bad. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The, the boycott did not work. <laughs> it's like the highest selling Switch game that there is. Yep. <laughs> Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. It's of course. Yeah. So we watched the first episode of a documentary about Henry Lee Lucas oh, on Netflix. On. I don't know who that is. A serial killer. <laughs> oh, fun. Okay. He's gross. Yeah. That's. I'm talking uh, yellow corn teeth stink man. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Super good fun time. Yeah. Well, apparently he murdered some people and then confessed to it. And then we haven't watched more than one episode, but it seems like his whole thing was, gee, they sure do treat me nicer when I confess to these and help them solve these cases. And so it sounds like he maybe confessed to just like everything they put in front of him. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> just to get the special treatment. when, Huh. Well... I don't know. We, like I said, we've only watched the one episode. I, we haven't quite got to the meat of the story yet. Yeah. But man, is he gross. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. oh, God. oh, I know I know something I did. I watched the first episode of Farscape the other day. I got kind of the itch because I was thinking about Star Wars and the Mandalorian and like uh, m- puppet shows that are good. <laughs> So not saying like Star Wars is a bad puppet show or anything, but like and it Mandalorian just kinda, is very good. Yeah, Mandalorian's <laughs> very good. And I've I still although I've only watched the first two episodes. I haven't uh, I haven't gotten caught up. There's three more, soon to be four more, or two more, soon to be three more that uh, I need to get see, caught up on. See, I have some opinions on the last episode, but if you haven't seen it <laughs> Yeah, I, I haven't I haven't seen it. I heard that the one with uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, the one that she directed is like a Seven Samurai. Yes, it's very take, good. It's, and it's probably one of my favorite one of the bunch. Yeah, and uh, uh, what's her name from the MMA and also Deadpool is oh, in Gina, it. Gina Gina Carano. Carano. Yeah, I heard she's very good in it as well. Yes. Yeah, but uh, but no, I watched the first episode of Farscape, uh, and I forgot how much I enjoyed that little weird dumb show. Like it is basically. If you take Firefly and Next Gen and mix in Muppets, <laughs> because it was a Jim Henson, it was like a Brian Henson, like his like big thing. And so it's like, it's like a, it's a bunch of uh, oddballs in space. You have a wharf character and you have a character that is kind of like the hard ass uh, former cop. And you have like a guy from modern day, you know, a, a modern day uh, astronaut that somehow gets shot into the future and also across space. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of like this motley crew of of misfits trying to uh, make it across the universe and not get like caught and, you know, everything. It's it's fun. It's 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 a fun, dumb kind of show. It sounds neat. I, yeah. I've never seen it and I know nothing about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the one thing. <laughs> Once upon a time, I tried watching it, and I got that mixed mixed up with Lex. Oh no, that's <laughs> and they, they, those are two like that's very a dirty show. <laughs> it's a ve- two very different shows. I remember uh, trying to watch it with a friend, and we're, I was like, "Oh man, the show Lex, it's so good. It has Muppets. It's gonna be great. It's kind of funny. Let's sit down and watch it." And popped in the first episode of Lex, and I was like, "No." That is not, I was like, I don't remember any of this. Lex is a dirty show for nasty boys. It's, well, I mean, it was not as, it's not, we're making it sound filthy. Uh. It's not super filthy. It was on, it was on regular television, but it, I mean, it was kind of, it was kind of dirty. Yeah. So. So It's horny Star Trek. It kind of, yeah, it kind of, it kind of was. Yeah. But, uh, but no, Farscape. Check it out. It's a good show. 
I mean, it's it's old. You kind of have to find out, find ways to find it. Wink, wink. <laughs> it's one of those things that has have fallen into the cracks of the digital kind of changeover. Like, yeah. Although I, you know, I I imagine it probably might end up on Disney Plus at some point, just because it's Jim Henson Company <laughs> and they like Disney owns everything now. I'll bet there was definitely a time when it was on Netflix. Oh, I'm sure it when, was. When Netflix streaming was first big and it was a smorgasbord of whatever garbage you could want. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I miss those Wild mm-hmm. West days of Netflix when you could find just whatever. Yep. Yep. When it was uh, quantity and not quality. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> that yeah. was a lot of fun. Yeah. I can't talk about it now, but uh, I know here soon I'll be watching The Christmas Prince 3. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about Christmas movies last time. We did. We? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I haven't we, watched any new ones. Yeah, we haven't watched any yet either. We need to fix that. Yeah. Yeah. You guys need to get on that, that bad, bad Christmas movie train. Uh, something I discovered, apparently, there is a former Power Ranger that stars in a whole bunch of them for Hallmark now. <laughs> Yeah, Aaron Cahill, the pink Time Force Ranger, is in like three or four Hallmark Christmas movies all about where she plays different successful big city ladies who go (laughs) to a small town, possibly in Vermont, to save the family farm slash (laughs) business and finds love along the way. Like, there's like a very... If you watch one of those movies, you've watched them all. They're very like by the numbers... And I think that's part of like the appeal of these Christmas movies. I, I'll be honest. I never really got into them in, until I, you know, I, you know, Jordan and I started hanging out. But uh, like, there is something comforting about knowing exactly when <laughs> all the beats are going to happen, yeah. and being able to watch five minutes at the beginning and go, okay, this, 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 and this is going to happen. Let's see how it plays out. <laughs> it's it's almost like watching old episodes of uh, Perry Mason. Yeah, have you ever guys ever watched uh, old Perry Mason with? No. Um, with uh, uh, what's his name? No, um, I'm I'm under ninety three. <laughs> it's listen, Perry Mason is. A, it's don't knock it till you try it. It's a really good like light mystery show. Perry Mason never loses, and ten minutes before the end of the episode, there is always the twist where something happens and Perry reveals his hand, and <laughs> the actual killer always confesses <laughs> he reveals his liver spotted hand yeah <laughs> <laughs> but like no seriously it's like there it's it's something very soothing about knowing exactly when things are going to happen when they happen i guess i mean that's probably the yeah. oldest old man thing i think i've ever said <laughs> but like it's, there's a my brother my brother and me does this great bit called what was it called that's christmas to me yeah where <laughs> Justin gives the synopsis of three holiday Hallmark movies. Oh, yeah. And one of them is made up. Mm. And, <laughs> and it's, he, it's difficult to, to yeah, pick them out. He because... almost always uh, tri- uh, trips up at least one of his brothers. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, because they are. They're pretty much, they're <laughs> they're pretty much kind of the same. Yeah. And it's the enjoyment really comes from the um, like the small performances like the quirky best friend. Usually there's one or two actors in those things where they're just like, they know they're in a bad movie and they're just like going for it. <laughs> like it's either purposely bad, like acting or unintentionally bad acting. Like it is, there's just something to them. I don't know what it, I don't know how to put, put my finger on it. Also, they're not Christmas movies, but uh, uh, there are a bunch of um, house flipper mystery movies <laughs> Starring famous musician Jewel. Jewel. <laughs> and that guy from Eureka who's also in the Maytag commercials now. <laughs> where one is a mystery author and the other one is a home flipper. And people keep dying in the houses that Jewel's flipping. <laughs> so they have to solve the murder in this one town. <laughs> and again, it's like very cookie cutter. But like it's enjoyable and jewel always just happens to have a guitar solo yeah, oh yeah at, at some point now's the part of the the show where i think <laughs> literally the first ep- the first one of these made for tv movies that we watched like they were at like the funeral for like jewel's old best friend who was the murder victim in this and like they're like and now we have a special someone who would like to come up and do a performance <laughs> and jewel shows up 
with her acoustic guitar. And I swear, <laughs> I think she plays a B-side off of one of her old albums. <laughs> it like takes you completely out of the scene, but it's like right there. It's kind of great. I know there's something else that we did have, that's probably like it's like right on the tip of my brain have you done more death stranding no actually okay nothing nothing like let's see when talk about watching old episodes of rick and morty yeah we did we finally finished the second season of rick and morty oh okay sure it was okay <laughs> <laughs> i i realized i watched a couple of youtube like critiques on mm-hmm. Rick and Morty, and it helped me realize what about it rubs me the wrong way so bad. Okay, let's hear it. And it's because it equates intelligence with cruelty. Yes. When yes. You're, when you're smart, you're mean. You have to be mean. That's how smart people are. And it's like, no. That's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're. You know. That's absolutely right. I've never thought of it that way, but that you're that's exactly yeah. it. And that that's why Rick is not a fun jerk. He's just a jerk. He's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like there's nothing like inherently fun or cool about Rick because he is just like, I am the smartest person among you. And so I must be mean to you for being dumber. Like, come on. There, there's even a, what's that quote where he's like, kindness is just something dumb people do to hedge their bets. And it's like, no. no. <laughs> well, okay, so do you think that the show's original concept was Rick is this way, but he's wrong, and somehow along the way that message got lost, perhaps? Yeah, or they don't even try yeah. to, to say that. I mean, they do try to say that Rick is wrong and he's not somebody you should emulate, but they all they still always make him look like the coolest guy there. Yeah, they turn so, around and yeah. Yeah, so it never really comes across that, you know, this is not cool. Hmm. This is not how people should you know, smart people have to be. Like Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's why I just never went back to that second season. Cause at least in the first season, Rick had that final episode where he was very sad and they say the thing about the wubba lubba dub dub and like he ends up he has legitimate bonding with Summer and yeah that last episode is that of the first season is actually really it's, good it's really good uh, I would say for the first season's pretty good but like that second season I tried it and like half of the nah. second season is trash and half of it is okay it's okay okay huh Morty's mind blowers was pretty good. <laughs> where they, it was the new version of the intergalactic uh, oh, TV ca- cable, cable thing. thing. But it yeah. was a, a room that Rick has under his garage where he stores the memories he has to erase from Morty's head to keep him sane. Oh, okay. So they go through all these little vignettes of things happening to Morty. And then it becomes more apparent that Rick is just kind of selectively erasing things like when Rick does something stupid. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. Like, yeah. There's a little bit where he says, we shouldn't take the, him for granted. And where he's like, what did he say? <laughs> we shouldn't take him for granted. Is that what you think that word is? You think it's take it for granted? <laughs> <laughs> so he'd gotten so petty that he started erasing, he, you know, like, his dumb mistakes. There's one where it just, Morty beats him at checkers. <laughs> <laughs> he erases it. Okay, that's, yeah. and that's that's a funny joke. That's that's clever. But like, yeah. But some of those episodes are just like, I don't know. That one where he got in an argument with the president and it got ridiculous. And it, I don't know. It was just Rick being a jerk for. Yeah. I still haven't watched any of the new season yet because I mean it's not easy when you don't have cable. Well, sure. <laughs> That's true. Not impossible. Not impossible. <laughs> but yeah, and like, I I don't know. I, I still think a lot of what has soured me on Rick and Morty is the fan base. Yeah. And, you know, you try really hard not to let that seep in. And honestly, I'm getting that way about a, a lot of different things. <laughs> Star Wars fan base, that's starting to seep in a little bit because there's an awful lot of toxic people in that. I, I was almost anti like it really soured me on star wars until the mandalorian came out and oh, i'm like yeah. oh yeah yeah it can be the, good this is what i like, like yeah <laughs> yeah but like even uh we're gonna talk about it later but the new ghostbusters trailer like there's been a lot of like it's it's funny to watch these like 
turd boys like bend over backwards <laughs> about how much they love this absolutely like meh trailer because they feel like they have to be right because they were so yeah against the other one like yeah yeah that's yeah well we'll get into that when we talk about the ghostbusters trailer but like yeah mm. <laughs> But it, it it wasn't as bad. I was expecting to just roll my eyes out of my head. Oh yeah. But I I didn't. It was okay. Mm-hmm. It really rolls out to be about. It's a little bit better than Family Guy. Oh well, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> I think that's I think that's my my final verdict on Rick and Morty. So would you say that's the seal of approval? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the seal of. Eh. Eh. <laughs> eh. I'll, make, the, the, I'll, the, I'll play a I'll play a, a seal sound backwards. Yeah. For that, <laughs> then we need a new logo for it where he's like where shrugging, he's shrugging his yeah. flippers. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> um, okay. The other thing that I checked out, and uh, I I want to go back and watch it again because, admittedly, I was I uh, it was during down moments at work, so I didn't really pay as much attention to it. But I watched the first episode of the uh, Crisis of Infinite Earths. Oh. Uh, CW. And it was, it was good. It's a lot of setting up and boy, oh boy, I've missed a lot of things from a lot of those different shows. <laughs> but the, the like little bits, like the uh, cameos and like the nods here and there are pretty great. I feel kind of bad that they're like erasing a lot of universes because like one flash they go is, is like Earth 89 and you see uh, Robert Wool's character from the original Batman movie, the the um, uh, Alexander Knox, the uh, uh, newspaper guy with the hat, and all of a sudden the sky turns red and that Batman universe disappears, <laughs> and then it cuts to Earth sixty six, and you have old Burt Ward with a wearing a red sweater vest, walking a, a Doberman Pinscher like that looks like Ace the Bat Hound, <laughs> and like the sky turns red, and he goes, "Holy red apocalypse!" and Aww. then it disappears. So it's like w- winks and nods here and there. And I, you know, I kind of like that. I mean, it's, I understand that a lot of it is like, hey, do you remember that thing? Yeah. Point and clap because it's that thing. <laughs> but it's still kind of neat. It's still kind of neat. I mean, and that can be fun if you do it right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just kind of interested to see what the end game for this is other than, hey, Stephen Amell doesn't want to do this show anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I Honestly, I think what's going to happen is they're going to coalesce all of the various continuities into one continuity so that Supergirl characters and Black Lightning characters can cross over more frequently and easily with Flash characters. I think that's what they're doing. Arrow's going to Iron Man his way right out of the situation. Pretty much. (laughs) Yeah, that's kind of what it seems like. But uh, but yeah, you know, I'm going to stick with it. It's a five parter. There might be more parts to it. I've really only watched the first episode. How how newbie friendly is it if you haven't seen half of the shows? Moderate. (laughs) Moderate. (laughs) So not great. Not great. But like, I would say it is newbie friendly if you have wikipedia handy (laughs) like read a synopsis of the previous season or two of like the various shows and then i think you can go into it pretty okay there were a few things that i saw that i just didn't know what was (laughs) like well i don't know who that is (laughs) but but then again like i said i was i was kind of fading in and out of it so i wasn't really it deserves a, a closer watch and i'll probably review the whole thing like next week or the week after whenever it's finished up. All right. So, Hey, let's go ahead and take a break here. And when we come back, we'll talk about a little bit of news. Hey, we're back. That was the Ghostbusters theme by Ray Parker Jr. Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Yeah, Bustin makes me feel good. That trailer didn't make me feel good. <laughs> well, do we want to talk Dude, about might it? Might as well get it out of the might way. Might as well talk about it. Yeah. So there was a new trailer. We've, we've talked about, we've mentioned it a couple of times. There's a new trailer for Ghostbusters Afterlife. The, actual follow-up to ghostbusters 2 i guess i I guess yeah directed by jason reitman who's the son of ivan reitman and it boy i just don't know it sure is different yeah like like there's no jokes that's (laughs) i am i'm honestly not sure if like the trailer has no jokes that's the trailer looks very much like Stranger Things. They're a hundred percent chomping that Stranger Things vibe. Even 
Paul Rudd's character is their science teacher. Yeah. Which is like awfully on the nose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I have a feeling the movie is going to be a lot funnier. But I would hope so. <laughs> it's, it seems like part of the the this trailer is like they've they were the people who cut the trailer because they usually go to separate um, you know trailer houses basically uh, production companies to cut trailers and they were probably given the mandate hey don't make this like Ghostbusters 2016 we want this to look as diametrically opposed to yeah they they over the, the last I don't, one I don't want to say overcorrected because there really was nothing wrong with the other one sure. It was it was fine. It was just fine. Yeah, but they yeah. It, I w- I would ask, you know I'm gonna say they overcorrected. They <laughs> they they bounced so far in the opposite direction with this trailer. So let's let's get into what happens like in the trailer. So we got a lot of kids. Got a lot. Of, that is the biggest problem I actually have yeah. with this. I do, is there any kids in the original Ghostbusters? There's a baby. There is a baby in Ghostbusters <laughs> too. Yeah. yeah. But like, other than that, children might not exist in the Ghostbusters universe. <laughs> yeah, like, well, no, there were a bunch of kids in Ghostbusters too th- oh, when the they go to the party, party where they yeah. wanted He Man instead of the Ghostbusters. <laughs> but like, uh, so like, the movie is not set in New York. It's set in New York State in some abandoned farmhouse in the middle of nowhere, and it's following a family of. A Ghostbuster, they're very coy about it, but it's definitely Egon. Yeah. It's definitely Egon's family, which, hey, surprise, Egon had a family, I guess. That's something that happened. Yeah. I I suppose. But it's this fam it's this mother and two kids that go to Egon's family farm, which is weird because Ray had the family farm. He mentions it in Ghostbusters One. This is true. <laughs> and also then ghosts start showing up, kinda. And uh, yeah, like some green mist gas comes out of a well. A well at the Shandor uh, mines, because that is a reference to Ghostbusters One. Ivo Shandor, he's the one that built the the, ta- the, the tower yeah. that is the the uh, conduit, conduit for the Gozer. Yeah. So is this movie just going to be Gozer again? Pro- is, is it going to be? Is it going to be Gozer? Are they going to f- choose the former the destructor, and it's going to be like a Funko Pop or something? <laughs> So just it's a fun co pop of Slimer. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, with those dark <laughs> black eyes. See, that would be funny though. Yeah, like it's kind of funny. <laughs> See, well then, well then, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, they we do get Paul Rudd, and I have a feeling he is going to be like a cross of the. If I had to pick any of the four main characters, like the main four archetypes of the Ghostbusters, you have the smart guy. You have. The weird guy, you have... The weird smart guy. The, the smart guy, the weird the, smart guy. The, the smart guy, the weird smart guy, <laughs> the uh, sarcastic guy, and... Um, Winston. Winston. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's how they wrote it. That's like, how they wrote I, it. Yeah. yeah. It's bad. It's, it's, it's not good. It's but... the, 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 the layman. The, yeah. the, the, the one that's not connect. The unconnected, I guess, would be the way. But, like, I would say that while Paul Rudd would fit the sarcastic one, like, when they first cast him, I was like, oh, great, he's going to be, like, the Peter uh, Minkman character. I think he's going to be more of the um, Ray Stance. He's yep. going to be more of the... Yep, that's um, what I was going to say. Dan Aykroyd-esque character he's in, the, he's in the tone. Go- well, he's the Ghostbusters fan. He's the fanboy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's interesting that uh, one of the two kids is a girl. That's cool. Although it took me, honestly, a couple of watches of the trailer to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> to know, to think what, it wasn't just a really feminine looking Finn Wolfhard. That's what I thought it was. I, I thought it was Finn Wolfhard and also Finn Wolfhard. Um, it might as well. They might as All the kids might as well just be Finn Wolfhard. They might as well be. Yeah. He was good. In, he's not even the best kid on Stranger Things. <laughs> I mean, listen, the kid has got a niche and it is playing teens sass, uh, sarcastic teens in the 80s in the 80s yeah. or sarcastic teens that reference things from the 80s <laughs> but hey ride that for as long as you can yeah um so i think he's going to be the peter venkman esque character because he had the one quip he had the one joke yeah that wasn't even it wasn't even that, funny that of a joke. good yeah but it's like all of a sudden ghosts are going to start c- popping back up for some reason it's still that line yeah. Paul Red goes, 
there hasn't been a ghost sighting in 30 years. What? Yeah. What does that mean? When you set up a world in which ghosts are regular, a fairly regular occurrence, Bill Murray's character talks about franchising in this, in like the Ghostbusters one and two. Like, did they get them all? Did they did they catch all the ghosts? In in 30 years, did they catch all the ghosts? Yeah. <laughs> Is that what we're supposed to believe? Like what? And then nobody died. Yeah. No more ghosts were made. Because they like set up like that people turn into ghosts because of the Scolari brothers in Ghostbusters 2. The two criminals that were electrocuted and then came back as ghosts. Those were people. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't I I think they threw that line in specifically to go, hey, don't worry. That other Ghostbusters movie doesn't count. And that sucks. Yeah. And that just sucks. They didn't have to. It, they didn't they have didn't to have reference to it at all. It. Yeah. They didn't have to reference it at all. That movie made it clear enough that it wasn't part of the continuity either. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. Watching this trailer, it seemed as though they were like, they were like so painfully wanted to put in like the slow, like the Ghostbusters theme, like played slowly in a minor on the, key. And the <laughs> minor key on piano only, but they couldn't because it was done in the Ghostbuster 2016 trailer. <laughs> so they couldn't do it in this one, but there's like, it's like the beats in the trailer match that like perfectly. <laughs> like, I don't want to be down on Ghostbusters, but like, listen, Ghostbusters, the original was, it was a fluke. It's a one. It's a wonderful amazing movie one of my favorite movies of all time same here oh yeah (laughs) but i will be the first to admit that it was lightning in a bottle it was a film that should not have been as good as it was and they couldn't even do it again too for ghostbusters 2 they couldn't do it again yeah i mean it was it was a perfect mix of dan Aykroyd coming up with crazy stuff and harold ramis and ivan reitman writing trying to write comedy around that Dan Aykroyd's crazy and Bill Murray not knowing and not caring what he was doing as long as he got the paycheck (laughs) because like you could tell there, there was like, there is a flippancy in Bill Murray in that movie going back to watch it. That is, cannot be replicated (laughs) seriously. Like that movie is lightning in a bottle. And I mean, I guess in that sense, it is good that, Ghostbusters Afterlife is not trying to replicate it. They're trying to do something different because it, they would fail miserably if they tried yeah. to copy oh, yeah. the the original. But they're going so far in a, another direction that it almost doesn't see. I don't, hopefully there's another trailer and it's better. Because this one was just like, look, it's the trap. Look, it's the Ecto-1. Hey, like, do you remember this? Yeah. Hey, there's there's symmetrical book stacking. Hey, look! There's Nobody mold. Book stacks books like this, yeah, Egon. And there's mold and spores and Remember fungus. When Egon said that, yeah, yeah. Like again, I don't want to be down on this because I I like I like Ghostbusters, and I'm sure a, I'm sure a good portion of this. I'm playing devil devil's advocate at this point. I'm sure a portion of the problems that we have is the trailer. Yeah, I think yeah. a lot of it is it was cut to not look like a comedy. It was cut to look like Stranger Things. Yeah, and I think, you know, you can have your fanboy point out moments if you've got a good, like, other story to hold it up. Relegate that to to Paul Rudd's character only. Yeah, well, like, if there's a story to hold it up, but the story they have looks like Stranger Things, according to this trailer, so it doesn't hold up the fan service. Yeah, yeah. Kids. Yeah. Kid Ghostbusters. there's There's a German trailer that has an extra scene tagged on to the end. And it's just the kids playing with the proton pack. Oh, and it's okay. Like, why? Why? That's a unlicensed nuclear accelerator. Why are kids playing with it? Yeah, like, how could they even turn? Like, figure out how to turn it on? Like, the fun of Ghostbusters one was they're taking a, a crazy concept. Ghosts are real. We're going to catch ghosts and making it as mundane as possible because that's where the comedy lives. You take something fantastical and you make it, you turn them into plumbers. They're, they're ghost plumbers, <laughs> essentially. Uh, yeah, I mean, they wear, you know, dirty jumpsuits. They're a bunch of schlubby guys with yeah. cigarettes hanging out their mouths. Yeah, they were just going in and doing a job because it's it's like you have a leak. Or if it's it's like you got you have rats. It was it's They're a, exterminators. It's a very blue collar, yes. like, 
blue collar schlubby nerd start a business the movie yeah and <laughs> and like i don't know if there is room for kids going oh wow look at these cool laser guns yeah. i don't know i'm i'm not impressed I want I want another trailer. I want another trailer as well. I'm going to give it a shot. I'll see it in theaters because, hey, it's Ghostbusters. Yeah. You're going to see it. But, like, it has left me with a weird taste in my mouth to start off. It's, But we are in the minority. We are... Yeah. I, we, are, we seem to be in the far, far-flung minority. Although, like, a lot of the people I follow on Twitter, the, the people whose opinions I care about, mm-hmm. also kind of were like... Yeah, yeah. I've I've seen a lot of people just go, "Oh my God, new Ghostbusters!" It's like it's it's like my my childhood has come back. No, yeah. For one, it's nothing like. That. <laughs> hey, go watch Ghostbusters. Yeah. It because it's not like this. It's it's the same people that were going out of their way to trash the other one now feel like they have to bend over backwards praising this one because <sighs> yeah they want to be right. Yeah, like... that's that bothers me a a, a good deal. That's. Because there's, like, even if you ignore a lot of the criticisms we've laid against it, it's still not that exciting of a trailer. It's not. If it was not Ghostbusters related, it wasn't related to this franchise. If it was, if it was Ghost Plumbers and it was not related to Ghostbusters at all, I'd still be like, I don't know about that. If Ghostbusters 1 and 2 never existed, if this was the first Ghostbusters, we're getting a movie fresh never we have no concept of busting ghosts the only ghostbusters we are ever seen were that was that weird show in the 60s with the, with the two guys and the gorilla <laughs> and we see this trailer the first thing i would go is oh they're ripping off stranger things yeah this is just stranger, stranger things, things with with laser guns uh, and i mean i guess that's all right yeah so i don't know i i think seeing another trailer is going to be is because the parts, needed. the parts that weren't Stranger Things were Paul Rudd holding up a prop from the original film and going, <laughs> "Oh, look at this! Look at this cool thing! This is neat! You yeah, kids, you kids should be into this! Yeah, this is what I like. <laughs> hey, kids, you should be into the things that I like. <laughs> a grown man. <laughs> oh, I just, <sighs> I don't want to go on. This yeah, much we need to. We need to move on. We got a bunch of other stuff to do. Yeah, yeah. But I, why can't they just make a movie where they franchise out to a different location? And there's five new Ghostbusters that are famous. That Ghostbusters people. game. That Ghostbusters game where you were. It was partially written by Harold Ramis. That was done years and years ago. But it was you were an unnamed, like first franchisee of a new section of Ghostbust of the Ghostbusters franchise. And that's it. Yeah, you were the rookie. You were the and, rookie. Yeah, and, and you you were going to get trained and then go out and start your own. That was it. And that's all you need. Yeah. Why can't they just do that as a movie? Why can't we get... And they don't even have to fit those same archetypes from they the don't. other movie. They could do new ones. They could have... I don't know. Okay. They, anyway, let's, done. let's move on. So there's another it trailer. It shouldn't we'll... be that hard. <laughs> it shouldn't. It shouldn't. But hey, there's, there's another trailer. Let's... I have more positive things to say about this one. Uh, Wonder Woman 84. Yeah, it whips ass. It's <laughs> it's super good. Yeah. yeah. So this is the, the follow-up to Wonder Woman. It takes a time jump to the 80s, which is great. And it gave me some vibes of, at least with Kristen Wiig's character, it gave me some Batman Returns vibes. Like yeah, there's some that. definite like Selena Kyle stuff going on in there. Like just a, there's just so many like cool shots of Wonder Woman jumping around. Oh yeah, know, flipping that whip around, stopping bullets with her. Mm-hmm. She threw the tiara. She threw the boomerang tiara at one point, <laughs> and that's super great. The Wonder Woman movie gained enough, garnered enough positive for me that I. I'm ready to give this one. Oh yeah! yeah oh, if we didn't have the other movie and just mm-hmm. this trailer, oh, this would I would it. see this one. Yeah, I'd absolutely. Be for this too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am interested in seeing why they decided and how they are putting Chris Pine into this. Yeah, how yeah. does Steve Trevor come back? Yeah, I, that's a big mystery. I was kind of, I knew he was going to be in it, and I kind of thought initially when they had cast him that, oh, okay, he is going to be playing someone from the eighties who is maybe related to the original Steve Trevor, <laughs> like whose name also TV... happens to be named Steve Trevor. It's exactly what they do on the old TV show. Yeah. when They time jump it. Yeah. 
they hand wave it away in like two seconds. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of hoping that's what they were doing. But this trailer seem, makes it seem more like, oh, no, he is also a person out of time. He has been somehow traveled to the future, the future times, which, hey, OK, cool. There's room for that. But I mean, it kind of takes away some of the emotional uh, baggage from the first one and also from Batman v, v Superman. The reason why she is not currently Wonder Woman is because she lost her love in World War One. But okay, <laughs> okay, that's we're, fine. We're just gonna pretend that movie didn't happen, that's, which is I'm, okay. <laughs> I'm okay with that. That's I'm I'm cool with it. Kristen Wiig, I'm excited to see where her character goes. I don't typically think of her as like a movie super villain, superhero movie villain. But she's a good actress. She's a great yeah. actress. If you only, and she can do more than just comedy. Yeah, like if you she's... only know her from comedy roles, you're you're missing out. She's, yeah. there's some good uh, like independent drama movies that she's what in. Was, what was the one she did with Bill Hader? The uh, the Skeleton <sighs> Twins. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, she's really good in that. Yeah. yeah, they both were really good in that. But like, yeah, I I'm excited. I'm pumped. Oh yeah. The only thing is, I love like the '80s mall aesthetic thing mm. that they have. And I wish they would have beaten Stranger Things to the punch to it. Because yeah. the last season they did, they leaned really heavy into that Starcourt thing. And you know this movie did it first, and it just didn't get out before Stranger yeah. Things. Yeah, and that, that is really, a shame. It really, yeah, it's a shame that they kind of got their thunder stole a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess we better I mean, talk about all these let's, friggin' video we, games. We got a lot of video games. Yeah, so let's, let's do some video uh, games. There was two different streaming presentations from both Sony and Nintendo this week to varying levels of success. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, neither of them have anything like real mind blowing. Well, here's the thing. The game awards, we're recording this on a Wednesday, the game awards, Jeff Keighley's game awards starring Jeff Keighley and also <laughs> featuring Hideo Kojima and his, his masterpiece, Death Stranding. His, his best friend, Hideo <laughs> Kojima um, is going to be on Thursday and they usually announce a lot of different things. Uh, that's where Terry Bogard was announced last year. They'll probably announce who the last, the, the fifth one, the, well, not the last one, because they've announced that they're doing more than five. Right, but there's going to be a lot of different announcements at that. Um, but I, so I think this is them, uh, both uh, Sony and Nintendo, getting a lot of their uh, independent lower stuff out of the way. So we, so we're not gumming up the works with the Game Awards. Yeah. So we'll, we'll start with Sony's yeah. state of play. Their uh, sterile nintendo wannabe presentation mm -hmm. uh we got dreams that game where you make your own games seems to be the theme with the playstation <laughs> yeah it's weird uh, it's, uh, there's a lot of games where it's like hey it's vr and you make your own fun <laughs> all right i don't think dreams is necessarily vr i no, think it it's... does it does do VR, maybe? Dreams almost looks like a game engine instead of a just a game. Yeah, it looks like an extremely full-featured game maker. Dev, dev box, dev kit. Yeah. Um, and they've... That's fine. They've been teasing it for, I don't know, five years, years now. Years. And finally, it's going to come out in February. But I'll, I'll be interested to check it out. Yeah, sure. Uh, Paper Beast looks weird. I don't have much to say about it. It looks like some kind of spore origami uh, make your own fun VR game like we you mentioned make your a minute own fun ago. VR game, yeah. Like you will drop you in this world, you figure out what to do with it. Yep. Uh, the Untitled Goose game is coming to PlayStation 4, which I wish Josh was here to talk about that because he has played <laughs> he has he burned red hot on that game for a long time. He he beat it. He beat the whole thing and like It um, doesn't take long. It's I've like heard. it's like, yeah, it's like a couple a, hours. And it, I mean, it looks like a fun game. I've never played it. Everybody, the whole world burnt so hot on it for about a month that mm -hmm. I've I felt like I played it, even though I haven't. Yeah, it's but no, it's uh, the little bit I played of it. It's pretty fun. Um, I'm actually interested in this Predator uh, game. It is uh, a lot like Dead by Daylight or like some of those other. It's called a the the term is asynchronous, uh, asymmetrical, asymmetrical multiplayer. So it's basically you have a, a team of human players on one side and a super powered one player on the other team. It's basically uh, you're playing uh, tag. Yeah. Essentially. And but you are the predator and you're hunting a bunch of military people. It had a subtitle. It was predator something. something. Yeah. I don't know, it, it looked neat. Yeah, it looks fun. Uh, there was another one called Spellbreak and it's uh, a battle royale game with wizards. 
All right. It's Fortnite Wizards. But it, hey, no guns, so I'm good. Yeah. That's I mean, that's cool. It's at least different in that aspect and I'll give him props for that. Sure. Uh, there was a Kingdom Hearts trailer that didn't have any Disney characters in it. Oh boy, I have no idea what was happening in oh, that. Oh no, no, no. No, I played the game and I couldn't tell you what was happening <laughs> in that. I couldn't even begin it to. Was, it was toe to tip anime insanity. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> but that's pretty on brand for Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. And I guess if you buy the special edition of this DLC, you get the concert the musical concert that toured the U S which is integral for parts of the storyline of kingdom hearts. Like there are cutscenes from that musical, from that concert that explain what happens in the storyline of kingdom hearts. Because of course it does. Because of course it does. Also the DLC costs $30, which is insane to me. That's a lot of money. It's a lot. of. It better be a long DLC. It's a chunk of change. Yeah. Yeah. Babylon's fall. Is the new platinum game the people who did Bayonetta? Oh, and that's Astral the one. Chain. Yeah, see that yeah. one. I've complete. I completely forgot what the name, of- what that one was. Yeah, we I- just watched this trailer, <laughs> and some of these names I don't remember. It looks like a platinum game. It has a lot of like character. It's like action, action, and slashing, jumping around. It it's very stylish looking, but it looks like every other. Yeah, it looks like Astral Chain, but fantasy but version. Fantasy. Which is weird because Astral Chain started development as a fantasy as, yeah. style game. And... So it's almost like they just said, okay, we're just going to do this game that we wanted to do. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> uh, I skipped super liminal, super liminal there. It's like a first person puzzle game about perspective. Perspective. Oh, yeah, that one. Changing yeah. size of things in mm-hmm. weird ways. I, it looked really interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does look pretty good. Uh, the Resident Evil. What's that? Oh, Resident Evil 3 is getting remade just like the second one was. Okay. And uh, that second remake was really, really good. It was, it was fantastic. So I'll be excited to play this one. I've never really played. I've played 3 for maybe 20 minutes one time. Mm-hmm. So I have no like nostalgic feeling for it, but I'm excited to get to play it like it's new. <laughs> yeah, cool. That's that's great. It's, it's not my... Co- not my cup of tea, but that's awesome. I've heard a lot of really good things about those games. So, uh, do you want to switch over to the Nintendo stuff? Well, we did. We got Ghost of Tsushima. Okay, yeah, yeah. The the samurai game that they had like a two second teaser for, and was like more at the Game Awards. See the you Ghost, later. Ghost of Sushi Times. Yeah, it's it's that samurai game from E3 from two years ago. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sony announces their games way too early. They they do. Is the running theme I'm getting from this. So yes. We've got Dreams that's like five, five years, years old. Ghost of Tsushima, which was announced two years ago. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe hold on a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So that, let's go to Nintendo. Let's go to Nintendo. Indie World. Yeah. So for, these are all like smaller developer Yeah. Type no stuff. Nintendo stuff. You know, actually from Nintendo. This is all independent developers. Again, by this time next week, we're, we'll have some because of the the Game Awards. Yeah. Uh, Sports Story. It's the sequel to Golf Story, which is a, was a really cute, like, golf RPG game. Mm-hmm. And this looks like it just expands on that by adding tennis. Tennis and, and baseball. And, and baseball. Yeah. All in, like, 2D, like, big-headed, like, it, yeah, it looks fun. It looks yeah. pretty. It looks pretty cute. Uh, Dauntless. We they, we've seen stuff about that. The big thing is that it's out today. Yeah, it's it looks like a Monster cartoony Hunters. Monster Hunter, and it's on all the other systems too, and it has crossplay. Yeah, and that's what's that's what's really cool is that you can start it on your PC, and then it uh, carries your saves over, so you can play wherever. That's kind of neat. I wish more games would do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we had the Talos Principle, which is like an old game that was on Steam, came out on Steam three or four years ago, uh, but now it's on the Switch and it's a first-person puzzle game. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. kind of weirdly reminded me of Mist a little bit, but mm-hmm. like with actual gameplay and not just clicking through a card stack of yeah. slideshow images. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we have a uh, Murder by Numbers. Um, Samantha, this is something that's kind of... Oh, it's right up my alley. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love Picross and I love... What? Murder mysteries. <laughs> and you love murder. I love murder. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it looks really cute. Yeah, it looks like Phoenix Wright meets Picross yes, puzzle. It's, it's just like laser targeted towards me. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of the uh, art is done by uh, the 
someone who was attached to how to bo- how to full boyfriend how to boyfriend the, the bird dating game the yeah. pigeon dating sim yeah <laughs> his music from the guy that did the music for phoenix right yeah which, which is good music yeah yeah phoenix yeah. right has a banging soundtrack <laughs> Um, okay, Cody, tell me what is Skatebird? Skatebird is a skateboarding game where you're a small bird on a little skateboard. That's awesome. <laughs> and you, you skate around little like a skate park made out of everyday objects at bird size. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks really cute. It's been in development for a while. I actually I kickstarted this. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's cool. It's 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 still gonna be a little bit before it comes out, but it's it's yeah. pretty it's pretty soon. Uh, I I like skateboarding games and cute birds are cool too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Streets of Rage Four uh, looks pretty great. It's a you know side scrolling beat 'em up. It it has that uh, cool like neon eighties aesthetic that kind of like uh, final or not final fight neon uh, double dragon double neon, dragon neon which yeah. is a very good game it's excellent I I like this a lot I like the aesthetic a lot of that I've I in in recent years I've really kind of gotten into that like neon eighties oh yeah not not quite cyberpunk but kind of like the past of cyberpunk yeah. like I don't know it's kind of hard to describe but it's like a lot of synth kind of yeah. stuff and yeah i like i like that kind of thing and it's it's right up my alley it should um, have also a banging soundtrack it should because That's... all the other streets of rage games that have phenomenal and famously good soundtrack yeah yeah that's what i'm really looking forward to more than anything um hey we don't have it on the list but uh do you guys want to talk about that that game where you can date your sword i forgot <laughs> about that i forgot about boyfriend dungeon yeah. <laughs> it's a game where you're like on a vacation on an island that you have to clean out all their dungeons that have mo- full of monsters mm-hmm. with magical weapons that turn into cute boys you can also date. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to see more. I don't I can't decide. You can't decide if it's something conceptually you kind of are interested. Yeah, it sounds but, fun. I mean it looks really cute and it's a re- it's a unique idea. Yeah, it is unique. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, parts of it look pretty fun. Uh, the dungeon crawly bits look pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, how many JRPGs are there about like monster girls with their boobies falling out? Like, it's about time they made a well, game I'm, where you're I'm a thinking girl of, who can date a sword. Yeah, I'm thinking of uh, Xen- Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Yeah. Where yep. you literally date your sword. <laughs> Uh, the last one we have on the list is Axiom Verge 2. I never played the first one, but it was one that I definitely probably should have. Yeah. Because it's Super Metroid. It's Super Metroid. Yeah. And it looks very good. That 2D sprite and um, yeah. stuff looks excellent. So, uh, yeah. But that's it. That covers all of all the games. We did it. We did it. We did the list. And uh, just in time, too, because we're actually at the end of the show. Hey. Hey. So uh, you've been listening to Nerd Overload. Thank you very much for tuning in. You can find us each and every day over at nerdoverload.com. You can also check us out on various (laughs) social medias. uh, That's Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram by looking up Nerd Overload now. To just call Josh on the phone. And we have him should. Over the phone. <laughs> you can email us at staff at nerdoverload.com. You can give us a call on the phone on the official Nerd Overload voicemail. Call us at 586-372-8020 and leave us a message. We might just play it on the show. We'll play it on the show. Yeah. That's... Or, or not if you don't want us to. Or if you like to say a swear word, then we won't. We probably we'll, we'll make out. yeah we'll we'll make <laughs> we'll make it work it'll be all right. Uh, we're also on YouTube for the time being. Just do a search for Nerd Overload TV. Find the show on uh, various podcast catchers like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, and more. Uh, we have a Patreon, patreon.com backslash nerd overload now. If you like the show and you want to help support us, you can check us out over there. Get the show a couple days early, which is pretty cool. Thanks, David Pencil, for our theme song, Theme to Nerd Overload. You can check out his stuff at <laughs> davidpencil.com. That's right. And uh, again, thank you all for tuning in, and we will be back next week. Peace out.